All right, welcome to another unboxing video. So for this video, we will be unboxing the Dark Magician or the Black Magician off of Yu-Gi-Oh. So this is the Mega House figure from the Artworks Monster line. So this is supposed to be a heavier detailed sculpted line of figures. It's not technically a scale figure, but it is around a 1-8 scale if you were to compare it to a scale figure. I got this figure off of hobbygenki.com. It costs 19,690 yen, 4,990 yen for DHL shipping. Altogether, it costs 24,680 yen, which I ended up paying $187 even. So I got this after the release date. I ordered the last one off of Hobby Genki on January 9th. It shipped on January 11th. And then I received it on Monday, January 16th. So this is my very first Yu-Gi-Oh! and Dark Magician figure. So I'm super, super excited about it. This isn't my first Mega House figure, but it is my first Artworks Monster mega house figure Yu-Gi-Oh has captured many many millennials lives when we were kids i'm 31 years old now in the early 2000s a Yu-Gi-Oh was the ish yeah man and it's sad this past year r.i.p to the late and great kazuki takahashi he died a legend he died a hero r.i.p to kazuki takahashi and yeah man very very excited to have something very very important to many of our childhoods and before i start unboxing this figure please hit the like button please subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already check out my blog at otakusen.com check out my anime channel at how to anime otakusen and of course now i've been live streaming on monday nights so i changed the streaming from 10 p.m to 8 30 p.m but those times can vary so if you guys have something that you guys want me to take a look at or we could take a look at together please join the discord so yeah let's go ahead and unbox this figure all right hobby yankee box so they put it in just a regular brown box that's typically how they have it All right, there was no additional packing, but they did bubble wrap the box here. My biggest issue, obviously, would be the box. I'm not too sure how many people actually cared that much about the Mega House box, like the box outside of the actual figure box. Something happened. <laughs> Apparently, got the, the shipping label wrong or something like that. So they had to like tear it apart off of the box. So that's a little bit disappointing, but my, my question is, do people actually value this box outside of it? All right, guys, it has been a while since I've been this excited about a box. I love everything about this box. So it actually has everything on there that you would think i mean of course they have the logos of course they have pictures of the figure on the box so what's special about this part of this line of mega house is the fact that it's a lot more detailed and you kind of get that sense of detail on the box itself because it's basically what you expect out of, of like a scale figure box but they added a little bit to make it more detailed so that makes a lot more sense you have gold foiling of all the lettering which i love gold foil on the boxes uh, i liked it on the armor plus boxes of the ronin warrior figures and so here's no different it just makes it feel a lot more premium when it's gold foil lettering very subtly you have the dark magician this purplish dark purplish kind of silhouette that's in the background uh, it's hard to tell on video and maybe even on the pictures but it's a really really subtly cool look but for sure 100% the highlight of this box is the very front of the box this is the first time I've seen a figure box that you know did a little bit more in terms of images that they put on the box so the fact that they actually made this colored in like an actual artwork so when you think of artworks monsters you think of that line you think of detail 
it it just goes so well with the dark magician character and it just goes so well with the line of artworks monsters i love that part of this box it's a very very premium more detailed look and just that subtle change to have it look like it's a cartoon look like it's drawn in that is really really cool when it comes to like the quality of the box like is there anything like damaged about it the only thing that i could really notice is just a few little white speckles on the box it's very very small very very microscopic but that is pretty much it so let's go ahead and unbox this Nothing else inside the box. So on the figure, there's a lot of plastic wrap around it. And then you have the plastic wrap around his hand right here. Looks like the only assembly that we really have is just the hand. As you can see right here, he's missing a hand, so it is right on the staff. So this is actually a little bit different than what I've seen before, but there's like a little plastic peg piece to kind of protect the hand, I guess. And here you have the staff, all right, like this. So I guess my biggest thing is like, how far do I want to turn his hand to make it look as natural as possible? So we'll leave it like around right here. So yeah, let's take a look at this figure. I mean, I love this figure. This is 100% right up my alley of the kind of figures I'm looking for. And I like the overall detailed aspect of this figure. And it's the only kind of figure of Dark Magician figures that look like this. So. I like the metallic look. I like the detailed shading. I like the overall, what they're trying to do with this line in the artworks monster line of Mega House. So I think the overall design of this figure is a great choice. The detailed metallic look for this Dark Magician is by far my favorite idea for a design for this character. If you look at his Yu-Gi-Oh cards and his animation design, Honestly, those pictures in his design, they scream prize figures. If you look at it and pretend like it was an anime figure, you would think those would be prize figures in my eyes. But this Artworks Monsters version brings a new, fresh flavor to Dark Magician's overall aesthetics. This is basically how he looks when he is summoned. So guys, typically, like nine times out of 10, I would choose the blue color dark magician over the purple colored one it's just my preference of how he's designed but this artworks monster version is the exception because the dark purple in the gold metallic look gives life to what i think like dark or black means like it's black magic right so that yami vibe you should be getting from this character i I think you have that here with this Mega House Artworks Monsters version. I also just like the purple one more because his design, it's a more human-like design. They changed up his face from a blue one to a regular human face. So once again, it is like a 1-8 scale. It's not technically a scale figure, but it's about 9 inches tall. I compared it to my Kocho Aniplex 1-8 scale and it's around the same size as that, maybe even bigger. And I compared it to the one seven scale Alter Milim Nava figure and it's a little bit smaller than that. So around that one eight scale is, is about the size of this figure. So the most important part about talking about this figure is the level of detail. So let's start with the scope because all the gold painted parts of this body, especially the hanging part of his robe, is fantastic the design of those little details of his robe really really matters and it brings out a lot more of the character the life the design of the character comes out a lot more it just makes the robe on the dark magician that much cooler the shoulder part of his robe i mean there's like nice layers to that and it's sculpted very nicely all the wrinkles on his body on his robe on his back 
you know, all those little parts really, really matter to me. It just makes it look that much more real. The face, the hair, and the staff are all very well done. I have, I have some concerns about his eyes, but I'll save that for a little bit later. So the paint, I have to judge the paint quality just a little bit differently on this because the style of the figure, it's a little bit more of that grimy, dark look. So that kind of crossover between a lot of what you would think would be painted poorly actually kind of fits the figure. So typically I would rail a bit harder on every little nook and cranny, little crevice. So the paint itself is not perfectly aligned. There are some little issues here and there with some the gold paint lining. This is where the preference comes into play with the gold and purple paint. The gold paint can give a lot of issues on a lot of different figures. And here we have like the purple paint mixed in with some of the gold paint, but how it's kind of mixed in and how it kind of looks for the figure, like I don't mind it as much. However, there are some parts where it should have been painted better. Like on the front side of this uh, of his robe at the very bottom, there is a little bit gold paint on the purple shading of his robe. So that is where that issue really lies for me. And on the back of the figure, there's like this little ring circle thing. So that slightly bothers me as well. But you'll see it a lot better on the picture rather than in person. Like it's not really that big of a deal. And it's not really, you're not looking at the back of the figure looking down at him. So that's not actually that big of a deal to me at all. The painting, the shading, the metallic and grimy. I like to use the word grimy because it, explains what this figure is it's a dark magician so you get that kind of feel for the character in that way in the shading of it all the little hints of little purple in it it, it just really comes out and the gold really pops on this figure i just love how this is painted i love the design of it love how it was a sculpt this the face was very well done i mean i, I love that it was a new sculpt of the of the face compared to the blue one so yeah and that's what brings me into my biggest concern of this figure and it might be you guys as well it's how they handled his face and head area so what i mean by that is his face is a little bit too tilted over and his hat is covering his eyes a little bit if you look at the prototype pictures so what i mean by that is his face is a little bit tilted over and his hat is covering his eyes a little bit you kind of have to display it on like a higher shelf. So he's looking, if you want to get a better view of his face, you kind of have to display him higher to kind of get the view of his face. But if you're looking at like just eye level of just where you're standing, you're not going to be able to get a good look at his face. So if you pick him up and look directly into his eyes, kind of looking off to the side, but up into where his hat is covering his eyes, it doesn't look bad actually from that angle. But when you sit him down and try to look at his eyes from the side, so this is where the prototype pictures come into play. The prototype pictures, the very first picture, you get to see his face and his eye is looking directly at, you know, the camera, right? So I was trying to mimic that same look into my pictures, but I just can't do it because the way that they paint it in his eyes is a bit off. So he's looking more into his hat and I can't, you know, get that same picture from the prototype picture. So that is my biggest knock on this figure. His eyes need to be a little bit lower. Like they needed to paint it just a little bit lower or they needed to move his hat up a little bit higher. It just looks awkward. And that is my greatest disappointment because I put a lot of stock, a lot of stock into the face of these figures. So if I did have any kind of buyer's remorse, it would be that. You know, most of the complaints I've seen online is the size and the price. So that is the two top things that I've seen people complain about. If there is any kind of complaints that I'm okay with dealing with, it is the size and the price because as long as it's not quality related, the size and the price is something that that people can determine for themselves whether or not it's worth it. To me, I paid $187. Two years ago, this is probably too much, but this is in my range of being fair. 
I think the max price I would pay for this figure is 220 bucks on Ukiyo Kumo for the US residents. I still saw it for around 220 bucks and then they do give certain discounts every now and then. So you could probably get it closer to 200 bucks, maybe even less. So those are pretty attractive prices for this kind of figure. But what it comes down to, so if you were to say the face in the eye thing, like I didn't have an issue with it, I, the price is still fair. So the biggest decision maker for me would be on whether or not I would buy this figure. If you guys like this design and how it's painted and you're okay with the eyes, and I think this is a perfectly fine figure for 187 bucks. The biggest question now would be, am I happy with this purchase or do I regret it now? So once again, the biggest deal to me is the eyes and how his head is tilted over a little bit too much. And it really, it's, it's, it's just the eyes. That is the big deal here because the eyes being covered a little bit and you don't, he's looking into his hat. So if they would have just painted his eyes a little bit lower or moved his hat up, that is the deciding factor for me. And for that, I probably wouldn't buy this figure again, but since I have it, I mean, so I love like everything else about this figure. I really do. And the artworks monsters line that is like nearing the top. Like I want to see mega house drop more figures under this line because I want more highly detailed figures. And if they're going to cost around 200 bucks, like that is a great price for something that I would pay for a figure that's around an eight, one eight scale. Everyone else, we wish it to be bigger, but for me personally, I'm still okay with paying around 200 bucks. So really the three biggest factors, what it is the design of the figure and how it's painted in and whether or not you guys are okay with the eyes. It just comes down to the face and how much you put stock into his eyes and his face, whether or not you want to see his face. So there you have it guys. So I hope this provides some type of insight into these mega house figures and the artworks monster line of mega house they are coming out with a dark magician girl and you know i might end up buying that one too to be honest because i really like what these lines of figures are going for they have the black luster soldier uh, i forgot what it's called for the japanese version but yeah man i i, I hope they release some more figures from this because i'm really i really like this line like this is really in my alley of figures that i want to collect so yeah let me know what you guys think about this figure. Let me know if you guys already have this figure. So I would love to know. And if you guys are deciding whether or not you want to buy this figure, let me know if you guys are still picking up this figure and for what reason you guys are or are not, you know, getting this figure. So yeah, do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Check out my blog at otakusin.com. Check out my anime channel otaku sin how to anime how to anime otaku sin and check out my live streams on monday nights at 8 30 p.m central and if you guys want to get involved in the live stream and look at anime figures and you want me to look at certain anime figures join the discord if you guys head on over to the discord i will let you guys know exactly when i'm going to be streaming so yeah i appreciate you guys watching let me know what you guys think about this figure and I'll see you guys on the next video.